Parker will be the, uh, the presenter. Um, and today we will talk about uh, color management in Photoshop. So we will discuss about ICC profiles. We will discuss about rendering intents and uh, a little bit also uh, about uh, how to manage images in Photoshop basically. But I don't wanna tell you anything because Gerard will, will cover all, the, all, all these points. And on Friday, we will have uh, another webinar where we will discuss about the digital printing world in general. So we will provide some data. We will analyze the current status of the digital printing industry. Uh, we will also address what we know, which is uh, color management. So we'll discuss a little bit about uh, what is a RIP software, uh, why you need a RIP software, and what are the advantages of working with a controlled uh, color management workflow. Um, a couple of more things, then uh, I will leave the stage to Gerard. Um, it's very nice that you're that you're chatting uh, on on the chat on, on on the on the right side of the page. But if you look at the bottom of of Zoom uh, screen, you will see a Q and A um, Q and A icon. Um, the presentation will be around thirty minutes. Gerard will, will, uh, will give you a lot of uh, thinking points. And at the end of the presentation, we will leave uh, around 10 minutes for a short and brief Q&A session. Uh, if you have additional questions, if you want uh, more details about what Gerard will present today, uh, we will leave our, our emails at the end of the presentation. So feel free to send us an email and we will reply to you uh, one by one, okay? We will not talk uh, about inedit products today, okay? So the presentation is not focused on what uh, our solutions are, but we will discuss uh, about Photoshop uh, in general. So uh, the idea is really to share with you knowledge is not to uh, sell you the product today. So if you, again, if you have questions regarding the workflow, if you have questions regarding inedit product, please note down our emails. Uh, you will see our emails at the end of the presentation. Send us email, uh, send us feedback, uh, and uh, we will reply to you uh, as soon as possible, okay? Uh, Gerard, that's all for now. So I'll leave you the stage. I'll put, I'll, I'll be mute for the next 30 minutes and uh, uh, have fun. Thanks a lot for the presentation. Uh... For the ones who don't know me, as he said, uh, I am Gerard Book uh, from the Sales Department, but I've been uh, in the technical side for a long time here in Inedit. And I will try to, uh, as he said, to share my knowledge or experience on this field. And today we will treat the, uh, the color management aspects and how to make or, or, or take the best of uh, working with Photoshop. I will share the screen, okay, and, and share a presentation. Uh, hope everyone can see my screen. I might ask to please uh, make full size your screens because probably there are uh, some details that uh, that we need to see it. Uh, okay, we will we will focus on some small details. So make the the screen the, the biggest possible, okay? So, <clears throat> as said, we are making a, it's a very basic introduction to color management and using it with Adobe Photoshop, okay? Uh, the main points we're going to talk about today uh, are these ones. Uh, finally, you will see, okay? I just, uh, you can read a little bit all of them, but it's what he said, why to use uh, Photoshop, uh, different modes that are available, uh, about color profiles, what are them, uh, how we work with them. Then we'll focus in, in the RGB mode, okay? Because uh, finally, I will explain that probably is the one that uh, it's more convenient for us. Which kind of rendering intents we have, what are they, and what's the difference between them, and a conclusion of all we've talked. So let's start from... Why? Why Photoshop? I uh, think that uh, there are a lot of different platforms or, or software for design, but we're going to focus on Photoshop. 
these are the main uh, points and or keys the uh, why we choose Photoshop for for this. And it is because first of all, it is the most extended design platform. So many, many users in the world are using this platform instead of others that can we can we can find. Most importantly is that it allows to work with embedded profiles and work with them using the functions convert, assign, and proof profile, which I am going to explain during this webinar. And also it is even possible to send to print preserving the color management that we chose and we used uh, during uh, the creation of, of the design. Finally, uh, just in a small addition, uh, as you know, we have some products, we have some, which is called Neotextile. It's a software that we have for Photoshop, which are some additions, some plugins uh, to make it easier to work it with, um, for, the, for the textile wall, okay? I'm not going to talk about them, but you can always check them in our website and make a trial, okay? Uh, so finally, we think that Photoshop is a set, the main platform in the world for design. And in addition, we have this kind of tools. So from now on, I'm going to focus and show all the things that I'm going to show will be based on the Photoshop functions, okay? So in Photoshop and also in, in everywhere, we can find different color modes that we can use. Uh, I will just try to take, well, doesn't matter. I don't know if you're seeing, just a minute, sorry. Uh, I want to hide some things. Okay. <clears throat> so basically, uh, when we work in color, we have uh, mainly, there are more, but mainly we have these three modes, okay? Uh, CMYK, RGB, and LAB. Um, finally, I wanted to explain a little bit uh, which are the differences between them, okay? Working in, uh, this is a, the, the kind of modes, uh, it's something you can switch also in Photoshop, okay? There are different modes, and when you switch them, uh, you find sometimes that uh, uh, colors change a little bit or uh, the behavior of, of the changes you do in the designs are a little bit different depending on the mode that you chose from the start. So talking about CMYK, CMYK it is a subtractive mode. When we call it subtractive, means that uh, you see on the right side as a small graph in which, as you see, the, the addition of the three colors makes black. So we are starting from a white point. So the background is a white point and we subtract light from it. So at the moment that we put color on it, what we are doing is to subtract color, uh, subtract light until we get the maximum, which is black. The minimum value always it's, it's zero, 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 and it gives white a set. <clears throat> but when we talk about also black, which is the maximum, uh, this is a little bit uh, strange, a little bit sometimes to explain because we have the, the key, the K, the black uh, component. So we could think, okay, if I put a hundred of black and everything at zero, I have black. But also making combinations of them can give different tones of black and it's complicated to find the maximum value sometimes. It will depend on the on the printer or in the output. So that's why I put, uh, I leave it a little bit in the air, okay? Finally, uh, CMYK mode, it is based in how a, a printer a printer works because it's based on the, on the inks. It depends on the inks, on the ink CMYK. But let's make a short question. And what happens if our printer has eight colors? Um, not only CMYK, so we can have more inks than uh, just the CMYK based. Uh, maybe uh, some time ago, most of the printers, or, and also nowadays, lots of printers have CMYK. But when we talk about textile uh, printers, uh, nowadays, most of them, when we talk about, for example, reactive printers, uh, reactive ink printers, most of them have six, eight, and even up to 12 colors. So it is really kind of confusing to think in inks, in CMYK inks, when finally our printer can have more than four. Uh, so for some people that has in mind uh, the switching of colors by you know, putting more ink of one or, one or the other, uh, it may be easy 
but depending on the printer that have in production can be quite confusing, okay? So it's still a, a valid uh, mode, but now I'm going to talk about the RGB mode, which is the one that uh, we promote and we, and we use mainly, okay? Which is, a, a set the RGB. RGB, it's an additive mode. Uh, also, again, checking the, the right uh, graph, see that it's completely the opposite. When we have the minimum value, which is 0, 0, 0, we have black. And in this case, not like in the CMYK mode, it's always this point. So when I put 0, 0, 0, it returns me a black. So there is no confusion. And the maximum value, it's, which is 255, 255, 255, it returns the maximum value, which is white. And it's the mixing of all the, the three colors, uh, red, green, and blue. So it's completely the opposite of CMYK. We are adding light uh, to, the, to the color until we get the full light, let's say, and which it gives us in return white. <clears throat> the RGB mode is based on how our, not a printer, but on how our screens work. And it doesn't depend on names, it's dependent on color. This is the main reason also why we decided or we think that the RGB mode, it's, um, it's the most uh, useful or the most convenient uh, to work in also in digital uh, printing. Why? Finally, as I said, we are depending on color. We only need to focus in color. So once a designer starts working in Photoshop or any other platform, doesn't need to think on, okay, if I put more ink, from that or more ink. Uh, so not to think in inks and colors from the printer, but focus only on the color itself. Later, later, someone, uh, the, the producer or in production will be the one who really uh, tries to make the best from the color that the, the, the designer decided to print the best out of it. But finally, we, we, what we want or what uh, we prefer is that during design, you only need to worry about colors, not about inks. So finally, the inks and the device doesn't matter in this process. We are only, we're only focusing in color. And finally, as a last color mode, I, always, I also wanted to talk about LAB. Uh, LAB, uh, it is based in how the human eye works, so on how we see. These are the components also that, <coughs> that our <coughs> eye uses to see. It is a very vast, it's a huge color space and usually is used as an intermediary. I, I put these words universal language because uh, somehow to explain, I also, I like to compare it uh, with language, okay? Imagine that uh, two person talking different languages, okay? And someone says a word uh, sometimes some words in one lang language doesn't exist in a, in a second language, okay? Uh, can, can, can happen. So it's very difficult to explain one to the other. But if we have a universal language that uh, has inside all the words of all the languages in the world, it would be very easy to use it uh, uh, to uh, communicate between us. So this is more or less what uh, makes the LAB, um, the function of the LAB. It contains all the colors possible, even compressed inside RGB, inside any profile, it contains all of them. So it makes as an intermediary, uh, uh, a great communication between them. Even when we move from one to another mode, or even when we move in the same mode from RGB to RGB, but in different sizes profiles. So that's why it is used as intermediary because it really contains um, all the colors uh, that exist or that are in the spectrum, let's say, of the human eye, okay? And finally, it's device independent. So once one, it was dependent on the device, depending on the inks, depending on, this is completely independent because it contains everything inside, okay? So this is a, more or less overview of the three modes that we're going to, uh, that we have available also to work in Photoshop. I said there are some more, which is grayscale, but we're going to focus in the color ones, which are these three. And even more, I'm going to focus in the RGB mode, because as I said, this is the one 
that we think which is the uh, the most suitable for the kind of job that we're going to do. After that, uh, let's say, what's the color profile? Uh, because we are talking always about profiles, right? But sometimes we might could discuss uh, what is it uh, as a plain description, okay? An ICC profile, it is a set of data that characterize a color input or output device or a color space, fine. So this really means that it's just a, a set of data, this is fine, which contains the amount of colors our device is capable to represent. When I say device, uh, for example, in our case, we are talking about the amount or how many colors our monitor can show to us or how many colors our printer is able to print. So, because finally this relation, right? Sometimes our monitor can have uh, or can show us more colors than what our printer is able to reproduce or to print. So finally, our profiles are usually shown uh, in, in a 3D graph. For example, this one here that we are seeing, it's the Adobe RGB, okay? Which is a, a, a generic space, really, really big that contains lots of colors. And, uh, <clears throat> sorry. Uh, and well, and that's so, and probably uh, our printer for profile will be much smaller than this one. So we can see very easy in a 3D graph, the size of it. Finally, the bigger it is a profile, the more colors that it contains inside or the more colors that our device is able to reproduce. Okay. So here it's a, uh, a comparison more or less of about uh, different profiles that we can find or generic profiles that we can find. Uh, the first one is an Adobe RGB. Uh, we have a reactive uh, standard profile, uh, one from sublimation and one from a machine of on paper, okay, a proof in paper. So how we can compare any 3D profile viewer, there are lots in the market, okay? It's good enough to make a comparison of profiles. Like see that in the center, I made a comparison between two profiles, the Adobe RGB and the reactive one. Uh, and usually a monitor-based profile, like it is the Adobe RGB. Well, the Adobe RGB is even bigger than a usual monitor profile, okay? It's a standard, really, really huge. But still a monitor-based profile, as I said, Usually it's much bigger than a printer profile. And this leads to the question that I said before. Uh, if it's bigger, we have more colors, probably some of the colors that you are seeing in the monitor later on won't be able to reproduce on the printer. So we need to be very careful when we select uh, one color or another because the, the change or, the, or the, the resultant color can be much different from what we expected on the start at the start. So as I said, uh, I will focus on working in RGB, okay? I will I explain it a little bit, uh, the other modes, but finally, I'm going to focus in, in, in RGB. Uh, here are some tips uh, or important things uh, that I think that from, from the RGB mode, think that all spaces in RGB for example, I will go back just a moment, okay? Here, remember that in the comparison between Adobe and Reactive, we have two different profiles, different sizes. So we could think that the amount of colors, right? It's, uh, there are a lot more colors in one than in the other. But finally, when we represent them in values, in RGB values, even if one is bigger than another, we have exactly the same amount of colors, which is around the combinations that we have uh, in the three values, uh, R, G, and B, from 0, 0, 0 to 255, 255, and 255, we have more or less 16.7 million uh, colors or uh, combinations of colors, okay? And think that both profiles, the big and the small one, has the same combinations of uh, in RGB, have the same amount of colors inside. Probably 
uh, if the, the space is very small, uh, like in a printer profile, we will see that uh, lots of colors are very similar. And in the other one, we have, even if the combinations are the same, we have really uh, different colors and we have more saturated colors inside that profile. And as a result, if we think of it, thinking on, we have the same combination. So we have, for example, 000, zero is black, but probably in one profile, this value 000, zero, zero, and in another profile in different size, even the value RGB, which is 000, zero, zero, it's the same, but the color that represents, it's completely different. Maybe with black, it's not so easy to find, but imagine, let's go back again, uh, we have the three values, okay? Imagine that we check the value 255.00, which is pure red, okay? If we go back and we check this area, see that the, probably it's the, in the corner of the red in the Adobe RGB, which is a, a very nice and saturated red. But if we check our reactive point, the best red that we have, it's completely different from the Adobe RGB in a different position. So this means that the same value, 255.00, the best red we have, will really give a different coloring result than the other. So this just means that in two different profiles, the same RGB value can give or will give probably different color results, okay? We have to, to keep this in mind always, okay? It's a very important part of all the next that is coming, okay? <clears throat> so, sorry. So when we're working in RGB mode, we were, we were telling that we have big profiles, small profiles, uh, different spaces, uh, and we need a way to move from one to the other, right? So we are in a very big profile and we say, okay, but I want to move to my printer profile, which is smaller and see the colors of my printer. We have different ways uh, on achieving this conversion, this, this, this movement from, from profile A to profile B. And this is what I'm going to explain. Uh, we have one first option, which is called a sign profile. So sign profile, really, it's uh, uh, see that uh, in the image, we can see where in Photoshop we can use this function, okay? in edit assign profile. And if we use assign profile, really it will move from profile, the image, okay, will we'll change the profile from the A, so the source profile to the B destination profile that we select, okay? When we assign a profile, the idea is that it maintains the RGB codification. So as I said, every color in this image has an RGB Codification, it could be 000, uh, 234, okay? Any, any codification. So when we move from one to another, assigning, it is maintaining the RGB codification. But remember, I said that the same RGB codification doesn't need uh, or doesn't mean that the color will be the same because in different profiles, the, the, the same values of RGB can have different color results. So using this tool, assign profile, the colors are not preserved. We're only preserving the codification. In some cases, in some cases can be useful. For example, when we talk about RGB color libraries or representing, or if we want to make a search in our profile color wall. But still, when we are talking about uh, no, uh, about our images or uh, existing images, what we really need is that the colors, the colors are preserved, okay? But let's see, when we assign a profile, let's see the result. Uh, for example, see that in this case, I took this image, okay? This is the, <coughs> in the source profile image, this image had a sRGB generic profile, okay, embedded. And see that uh, in, in the left, in the up left side, I selected the color, okay? It's rounded the color I selected. I selected exactly the same in all the next uh, images, okay? So you can focus on that color. I open the color picker and see that in sRGB, we have the value RGB 158, 
165201. Okay, this is the codification for this exit color in the sRGB profile. Now what I'm going to do is this image to assign a new profile, which is a printer profile uh, that I have. Okay, and this is the result. Okay, see that I took exactly the same color after the sign. You can also see in the in the bottom of the image that the profile changed. Okay, and taking the same color, the RGB value it's exactly the same: 158, 165, 201. And this happens not only for this color, but for every pixel in the every color in this image. Okay, and as a result, yes, we are preserving the values. But see, I will move from one to the other. See that the colors are completely different because as I said, it doesn't preserve the color. It is preserving uh, only the, the values of RGB, which is the same. But finally, in our second profile, the same values doesn't mean that gives exactly the same color. Okay, This is how assigning works. <clears throat> Now, we have a second tool inside Photoshop, which is Convert to Profile. This will also, as we said, will switch from Profile A to Profile B. So it will really change the color space of our image, same as in Assign. But in this case, it will do the opposite. It will try to keep exact or the, the colors the maximum possible even sacrificing the RGB value. So it's not going to take care or, or to, to worry about the RGB values, but it will focus on keeping the color correspondence of them. And it's needed to see that the menu that we have, it's a little bit bigger, and we need to define <coughs> an intent of conversion, which we will talk later, okay? In this case, I used perceptual uh, to, make, to make the change and to see the, the, uh, the result, okay? So again, here we have exactly the same, the same window as before. We have selected one color and see that the RGB values are the same as before, okay? I took the same color. And in this case, I will make the conversion. Instead of making a signing, I will convert. So now this is a converted to profile, okay? So see that the colors try to maintain much better than when we assign it. But if we check the RGB codification of this color, see that it's completely different, similar, but different, okay? So in this case, it tried to maintain the color, but we lost the RGB codification, which in this case is not important because finally we, 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 we met our purpose that is to change the less possible the source image, okay? And the second detail which I marked is that, see that the color picker, okay? Sorry, this I forgot, okay? When we assign, it happened the same, okay? See that the color picker, uh, uh, mainly the, the vertical uh, axis in which we have the hue, because it, this is all, all the, our color wall of our profile, okay? See that it's completely different. So we are really changing the options even in the Photoshop color picker, okay? This is why one of the main reasons why we, it's important or it's very interesting to move to our printer profile. This also restricts our color picker to the colors that our printer uh, has, okay? So finally, what we have here, this color picker really converted to the, let's say, the color picker of our printer, okay? This was the colors that our monitor can handle, okay? Which are, see that they are a lot more saturated and brighter and it's normal, it's a monitor. And these ones are the colors from our printer, okay? So it's, it's really interesting that we really switched our color picker and now if we continue working, any color that we select, we will make sure that our printer is able to reproduce it, okay? <coughs> Sorry, just a second. 
Somewhat. <clears throat> and as a third option that we have in Photoshop is to prove a profile, okay? This is a different tool that we have in Photoshop. See that it's in a different place in Photoshop. It's not in edit, it's in view. And in view, we have the proof setup custom. See that the window of the proof condition, it's very similar to what we have in convert, okay? So in fact, we are doing exactly the same as when converting to profile, but not really doing it. Now you will see, okay? So it really does not switch from profile A to profile B. It doesn't make the change, but tries to keep the color correspondence. So it's the same uh, process as we were doing in uh, when we convert to profile, but it's really not applying. It's only showing to us inside Photoshop. If we save the document, it will be saved as the original, okay? So it's only showing on screen the difference uh, it's, a, it's just a simulation of the conversion, but it's not really, really applying the, um, the conversion to the image, okay? And also it has something very interesting, which is the possibility to simulate paper color, okay? It is an option that you can see also in the window of customized proof condition, okay? Which is simulate paper color. This option, it's not available when we convert to profile. It's only available in this proof profile. Now you will see the difference, okay? So <clears throat> this is our source profile as always. And now we will see the proof printer profile. See that it's a little bit different. What happened? This usually when we work in, in Photoshop, when we convert to profile, there's a, a small, um, thing that, that I don't like, I will go back again. I think it will be easy to explain this part, okay? So I will come to the converted. See that when we convert to profile, it's true that all colors move to the simulator of the printer. But on in the image, on the bottom left side, you have a pure white and a pure black, okay? See that there's no change in these two points. So. Photoshop really, it's not reproducing the white that we have. For example, if our printer profile was done on a fabric, usually the fabric, uh, the white, it's not perfect, right? A fabric can, can be uh, a little bit yellowish. So Photoshop, it's not reproducing this effect. So the black and the white always maintains like a perfect condition, okay? Even all the, all the other colors uh, really changed, really switched to the uh, uh, to the destiny, destination profile. When we use proof profile and use the simulate paper color option, see that it really also switches the white and, and simulates everything. Not only simulates the colors, but also simulates the black and the white of our printer. So we wouldn't say see a lot of difference in, the, in all the colors, but in the white and dark areas, there will be really a difference because this is really, really the colors from our printer. In this case, we simulated everything. That's why the proof printer profile is really interesting. But as I said, remember that I said, okay, we're proofing or we're making this simulation on screen, but we are not, we are not changing it really internally. See that in this case, uh, in the center, the color picker is still the previous one, okay? Also in the bottom, we see that the profile applied in the picture, it's still the sRGB. So we really only change it, the colors on screen, but nothing else has been uh, changed, okay? So internally, we are still on the same profile, but we are showing on screen, uh, how it will apply our printer profile. So finally, finally, as the best option I can offer, okay, it's this one, okay? We are going to make a combination of both. So we will take the best of both. First, first, we will convert to the profile. So see that in this case, really the, 
the RGB changed, uh, the colors changed to the, the, also in the bottom, the profile changed from first to the other. And after converting to my profile, I activated the proof printer profile. So I did both. So now we can activate also the, the paper simulation and we have all in one, okay? Uh, we have the, the conversion to the profile, we have the co in the color picker, the colors of our printer. And at the same time, we are simulating the, um, uh, the paper or the fabric in our screen, okay? Okay. Uh, let me check because there are a lot of comments and I don't know if there's something important. Ah, okay. Seems it was a problem at the start. Yeah, and I continued. Okay, <laughs> nice. Well, seems that the problem is solved. Okay, perfect. So, I uh, hope we don't have more, more problems than that. Uh, okay. So, talking about convert, because finally, um, we said that probably convert and also make the proof in case we want to see the, the, the background or the white of the fabric also on screen, seems like it's the best option, okay? And when we make the conversion, we agree that it ignores the RGB value. So, and at the same time tries to keep the most similar possible, uh, the, uh, keep the color, okay? The most similar possible from the source profile. So even in that case, remember that really some colors change it. So there were some colors uh, probably in the blue areas that existed on screen, but didn't exist in the printer. So the color really doesn't exist in the destination profile. So it will search the best possibility. So the, the, the one that matches the best, but let's say who is, who decides which is the best possibility? Right, because finally uh, uh, we have a color that doesn't exist, and someone needs to tell me which is the best option in the uh, destination profile. And this is the rendering intent. Okay, we have four different rendering intents called absolute, saturation, relative, and perceptual. And depending on the intent that we choose, all these colors that are out of gamut, let's say will become something different, okay? Depending on what we choose. I will explain them uh, shortly, all of them, okay? So when we use absolute colorimetric, what we have is that it's the most accurate, uh, let me activate the GIF, okay? We have the most accurate color communication between the ICC profiles. So see that even if we go from a very big profile to very small, all the colors that are in common will remain the same. So we will have the best accuracy possible. But the problems, the problems the, 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 is that we can have some clipping uh, near white and black areas if they are very different. Not only in the white, and in fact, not only in the white and black areas, but also in any color that are completely out of gamut. See that all that points that are out from the, from the small profile becomes exactly, all of them come to the same point. So this means that we will have a lot of gradients and colors that will be completely plain after that, okay? Still, it is an interesting intent to make proofing of a printer to another, okay? Because in this case, also the white, also the white will be printed. So if we, if we move from a printer profile to another printer profile, let's say that it's very interesting also when we make a simulation of a fabric in paper, in the paper, it will also even print the background. So if we have a yellowish uh, fabric and print it in paper and use the absolute rendering intent, we will see that it even tries to reproduce the yellow of the fabric. That's why it's a very interesting intent to print, uh, to make a simulation in fabric on paper, for example, okay? And this is how it looks, the difference. So in the on the left side, we have the sRGB and in the right side, we have the absolute used. Uh, we will check focus on two, ma two main points, okay? See that, for example, in the up left of the image, we have a, a gray gradient, okay? See that using absolute, 
as there's a moment that the white is not enough and the black is not enough, it, we have clipping, okay? There's a moment that uh, it cuts and we have exactly the same color, even the left and the right side. Same happens on the middle gradients, okay? In which at the last point, uh, it really clips and we lose a little bit of the gradient. And finally, it's also nice to see uh, there's also in the center a uh, woman completely in grayscale, okay, that even in the face, some of the gradients are lost and become plain. Also next to it, there is a black woman with white hair in which we lost a lot of details because of this clipping in the light areas, okay. But see that, for example, on the plain colors that we have in the up left side, uh, which are uh, small squares of colors, they really maintain quite nice. So as I said, the color accuracy is really nice, but when talking about gradients, we can have problems like this, okay? Let's move to the next one, saturation. Saturation, uh, it's, uh, it's a kind of intent that tries to preserve only the saturation of the colors. So it really is really nice when we want to reproduce vibrant colors, okay? But, but uh, it will sacrifice completely the color accuracy, accuracy and the gradients, and it will just deliver saturated colors, okay? Uh, let's see how it moves. See that all the points always moves to even on the right side of this, of this GIF, okay? Always move, even if we cut that color, it will move always to the, um, to the completely to the right side, to the most saturated color. And this is what it gives us, okay? See that uh, uh, we can, maybe here we can check most of it. See in the center, there are a couple of flowers to roses that it really moved to the most saturated red, but see that we lost a lot of detail. Same happens on the, we can see the same on the same, on a different flower on the right side, in which we had a lot of gradients and, and shadows inside the, the flower and in the right set as it becomes completely oversaturated we we really uh, lose all this precision and all all these all these details okay still okay sometimes it could be nice because it really brings the most saturated colors possible but as we said we lost the gradients and we lost all the accuracy in colors Next one, relative. See that relative has the same has the same uh, picture uh, or give than the absolute because it really works very similar, okay? But it has a, diff a big difference, which is the clipping in the near the white area, okay? So it's like, it's similar to absolute, but in this one, we solve the problem of clipping in the white or in the near white areas, okay? So we have also, the most accurate color communication, it preserves the exact colors within the gamut. And also in addition, the white, so as I said before in absolute, for example, that if we use absolute, it will print the background, right? Uh, we have, we compare or we move from a textile with a yellowish white point, it will try to print it. In this case, this is not going to happen because it, it really moves uh, the white point, okay? So as we said, this will keep the maximum accuracy, which is needed in textile, because finally we have colors, logos, um, we use Pantone colors, we use colors that really needs the maximum accuracy possible. So that's why this is usually one of the most used uh, in, in textile, okay? In the, in, or in or any kind of printing. And how it will look? See that it's very similar or as I said, it's completely the same as we had in absolute. But again, if we check the gradient uh, up in the left side, the, the grayscale, you will see that the white in this case, there's not, we don't see that clipping, right? That there's a moment that it's completely white. It really, the transition is really nice. But see that it's not solved in the, other, in the opposite side. The black really have some clipping. And this is the main problem of the relative. So it's still a very nice um, 
rendering in them, but it has some clipping in the dark areas. And not only in this gradient, but if we check some images here, which are the darker in the bottom right side, okay, we have a, a black guy and a, a black painted woman, we see that some of the details and the gradients are lost and became plain, okay? So relative, it's still really nice, but it has this clipping effect in uh, the dark areas. Now let's move to the last one, which is perceptual, okay? So perceptual has the best gradient communication between profiles. It will not clip on the dark or the white areas, but, but to make so, it will lose or it will lose or it will have less accurate color communication between profiles. Uh, see that in this case, uh, all the colors that are in the middle of the conversion and in the GIF that we have here, all of them moves a little bit in order, no? It, they, they position a little bit farther to let all the ones that are outside enter the second profile. This means that we really lost a little bit of color accuracy because all the colors in, in relative or absolute, all the colors that were inside or within the gamut kept at exactly the same point. So the color accuracy was better, okay? This is the rendering intent was used in photography because sometimes in, uh, in photos, there are lots and lots of transitions of colors and they need to keep the best possible to not have these clip effects, let's say in some areas. And just like uh, I, I want to point that because probably here we have a lot of Neostampa users and, must, and they might think, okay, Neostampa you use perceptual, but looks like relative works a little bit better. Okay, uh, just as a point uh, in Neostampa, we use perceptual, but perceptual is a little bit modified. Okay, so it's modified by us. When you choose perceptual, it's not the, the, the usual perceptual, okay? In Neostampa, our perceptual is the same as relative, but solving the clipping effect in the dark areas. So we take the best of both, okay? And create a new one, a new perceptual, uh, in which uh, we'll work with the best of both options, okay? That's why Neostampa 8 and 9 works with the perceptual rendering intent. It's not the usual, it's a modified by us rendering intent that gives the best of each one. Okay. And this is how it looks at traditional perceptual. See that if we check the, the grayscale gradient, it looks perfect. There are no jumps, there are no clipping. Okay. Also in the gradients down of it. But it's true that maybe if we check all the plain colors next to it, maybe we could find that in relative, some of them may look a little bit better. Okay. But still, as I said, uh, it's a different possibility. Okay, uh, all of this, if you want, you can make the test, you know how to do it now. So you can just go to Photoshop, take an image from yours and try all the rendering intents and see the differences between all of them. Finally, this is the, the purpose of this, of this chat, that you have all the tools and for each image, you can decide, because finally it's not about using one or the other, it's about using the rendering intent, the best suits for that for that job. So not just taking uh, the one by default, but now you have the tools to decide by yourself for one image, which is the best rendering intent that you can use for that purpose, okay? So finally, uh, as a conclusion, as a conclusion, um, I wanted to just make a summary of the, of the key points that, that we talk the, during this webinar, okay? First of all, it is very important to always have in an image a profile. Think that if you don't know which profile is embedded in the image, you don't know in which space you're working, uh, you can use any profile, but at least know which profile is inside it, okay? This is the most important. As an option for us, the, the RGB workflow is the best color space for a textile workflow. Uh, as we said, imagine that you have more than four colors in, a, in our printing environment, or we have multiple printers and one with four colors, five, six, uh, it could be. We, don't only, we will not only have one machine, but we could have three with different ink sets. And this would make very hard 
to work in CMYK, depending on the amount of things. When we talk about RGB, as I said, we don't focus on the inks of the device. We only focus on color. So it's a very nice uh, opportunity to use the RGB. Also, in order to maintain the color correspondence, after a profile conversion, we use convert to profile, not assign. So when we convert, we try to keep the colors the best possible and selecting a rendering intent. And depending on which, we, in which one we use can really change the color output. So it is our decision to choose the intent that suits best for that, uh, for that job we're going to do. And finally, I wanted really to remark that the Photoshop option proof is really great to make the simulation of the white on screen. So everything will look better. And remember, as I explained, that making the combination of first convert and later proof, it <clears throat> really gives the best combination possible inside Photoshop because we will use, uh, we will really change the profile by converting and also using the color picker of our printer. And finally, with the proof after that, we will have also the best simulation possible on screen. And well, uh, I think I arrived to the end of, of this session, okay? Uh, as always, uh, we remain available. Here you have uh, the contacts of me and Luca uh, for any question that you may have in the future, okay? Uh, as we said, this was a very generic color management uh, usage in Photoshop. Uh, Maybe some other day we can talk also how to apply this in our tools, into our RIP or into, into our um, uh, tools for Photoshop Neotextile or our RIP Neostampa. But in this case, I wanted to make a generic introduction. I really hope you liked it and that you learned something from me. And uh, probably, as Lucas said, we can... Now I will try to stop sharing this, the screen, and let's see if we can answer some questions. Yeah, well... Hi, Luca. Are... <laughs> Hi, I'm back, here. Back, back to you. <laughs> <laughs> That's my face back again. <clears throat> Thank you so much for the presentation. Um, yeah. And let's try to answer a couple of questions. Maybe we don't have much time, but I'm um, looking at the Q&A there, there. There were a couple of questions that maybe I will, I will ask the question to you like uh, if I was one of the <clears throat> attendants. One of the questions that I that I see here, uh, a couple of people were asking, uh, which is the uh, color mode that you would use in, in Photoshop to prepare the image for printing? They're asking, uh, would it be RGB or CMYK? Let's say, uh, will you work in an RGB space in Photoshop or will you use CMYK? Mm -hmm. Well, as I explained, finally both are good options, but but uh, because each one it's focused in in as we said in two different uh, ways of working. CMYK focus on inks of the printer and RGB focus on the color. For us, the best option is RGB because as we explained, uh, if we have a machine with more than four colors or multiple machines, it's much easier to focus on color and not to focus on the on the final output. So in textile and also in all, I think that probably in all uh, kind of printing, not only with textile, uh, RGB should be the, the best option. Great. And another question that I see here that it's, it's interesting for the person that are already working with Neo Stampa or with a RIP software in general. Uh, they are asking, um, is it better or what is the uh, suggested workflow would be to convert the image to profile in Photoshop, or you can do the conversion uh, in, in the RIP software, or maybe mm -hmm. both. What, what is the, 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 the usual workflow? So I uh, think that it's true that Neostampa will do it for you. So anything that you uh, do in Photoshop, if you don't make the change or you don't convert to profile, Neostampa will do it automatically for you. But, but it's also nice we are giving this option because if you do the conversion in Photoshop, you will be able, as we said, to work with all the with the device colors, okay, in your in your color palette, 
and also to see that one's on screen. So if you keep working with a generic profile, all of that, even if the result will be the same because Neostampa will also make the conversion for you automatically, you uh, will be working with on, on screen in Photoshop with colors that really doesn't exist. That's the main advantage of doing that in Photoshop also. Great. One last point that I would like to clarify here. Um, somebody's asking why we didn't talk about Illustrator. Um, at, at the beginning, Jar said that um, basically Photoshop and Illustrator are the two designs platform most used in the market. The difference is that Photoshop is pixel-based, Illustrator is vector-based. Uh, so depending on what you what you want to do, if you want to do logos, for example, if you if you have geometric designs and you want to use vector, then you're, you're going to go for for Illustrator. Uh, on the other on the other way, you would use Photoshop if you are creating uh, art, like uh, I don't know artworks, uh, aquarello, and uh, typical textile designs. So. According to, to our experience, we would say the, the majority of our customers use uh, um, Photoshop and our solutions are based in Photoshop. At the moment, we do not have a solution for uh, Illustrator. Let's say to, um, we also have a set of plugins that are connected to Photoshop. So we work mainly on Photoshop, but it doesn't mean that uh, companies are not working with Illustrator. You will find also a lot of Illustrator in the market uh, you will find Photoshop and you will find Illustrator. Uh, Gerard and well, in, in Inedit in general, we decided to uh, have a solution for Photoshop. So this is why the presentation was mainly focused on, on Photoshop and not on Illustrator. Mm, just a small note. I don't know if you want to add something, Gerard. No, it's fine. It's true that uh, I said there are, I, there are many platforms uh, used for design. Uh, we focused a set in Photoshop because uh, that points, okay. Um, but finally, I know that uh, Illustrator is also a nice tool. And there are lots of different ones also, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, finally, we focused in, in this one because uh, kind of design for usually comes come from that. And as he said, most of our customers work with that. So we focused on this one. Maybe, maybe we could... Uh, explain a little bit of workflow from Illustrator another day, but in this case, we focused yeah. on this one. Well, uh, I see that it's it's very nice. We have a lot of questions in the Q and A panel, so maybe we can set up a, a Q and A session another day because now we are running out out of time, and the purpose of the day was not to 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 really fill in the Q and A, but was to to present you a few concepts. So. Uh, we will stop here. Again, thank you so much, Gerard, for the presentation. It was very nice, at least for me. I learned something, so I hope that also uh, the others uh, can uh, well, take the most out of it. So thank you so much for your time. Uh, I think we will create another Q&A session. Really, people are getting <laughs> crazy here. So we will collect all the questions and uh, try to select the, the most interesting ones and, uh, and create another session another day. OK. Uh, do you have something more to add, or we can go grab a cup of coffee and, uh, and say hello to everybody? If you're asking to me, it's, it's fine. To you, for to you. <laughs> <laughs> it's completely fine. Uh, really, thanks a lot. Thanks, thanks a lot to everyone for the assistance. Uh, more than 100 people. I was getting nervous, but <laughs> I, get, I did the best of me. So thanks a lot, and we will see you again in short. Uh, starting this Friday. I hope all of you assist again, okay? Yeah, guys, don't forget to sign up for our Friday webinar. You can find the link to sign up on our website. Go to www.inedit.com and uh, with a simple click, you can sign up. It's completely free, totally free for everybody. And uh, today was very interesting on Friday. I hope it will be even better. So see you all on Friday and have a good day. Stay safe. Bye-bye.